All right, here we go. We're going to do a tutorial on using the multimeter functions in multi-sim. We're just going to use the basic voltage and current multimeter functions along with a watt meter and a frequency counter. We'll start by building a circuit. Okay, so we'll start with an AC power source. We'll drop it in here. And actually what we're going to do is we're going to build an AC circuit and a DC circuit in this case. So we have an AC source and a DC source. We're going to double click on the AC source and change it to 24 volts AC. We're going to double click on the 12 volt source and give it the same value, 24 volts DC. Okay, uh, we're going to go up to the basic family and we're going to get a resistor, a virtual resistor. So basically this is going to act as a heater. Resistive load. I'm going to click on this by right clicking. I'm going to rotate 90 degrees. Okay. I'm going to change that value to 24 ohms. Okay. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it down by the 12 volt source. I use Control V on my keyboard. You can just right click paste. Okay, we're going to connect our lines, our conductors rather. And in our last video, a tutorial of basic setup, when we run simulation, we have to have one of the conductors grounded. So we're going to go up to power source, pick up a ground, drop it on that can conductor. I can copy it. I can paste it onto that conductor. I'm going to right click, or sorry, left click and then right click and choose net color. I'm going to select black. Okay. That's going to come, that's going to make sense when we start working with the uh, oscilloscopes. Okay, and it just tells us that we have a, our bonded conductor. Obviously, is a different polarity than the uh, than, than the than the ungrounded or unbonded conductor. Okay, now we're going to get a, a meter, and we're going to measure current and voltage on the, on the circuit on the top. You'll be doing this later, so I'm just giving you some tips now. We're going to drop that meter in. We're going to use it for current. Just think about how that's going to be connected. I'm going to drop a meter over here by the resistor. Okay. Now we know if we're, gonna, if we're going to connect a meter to measure voltage, we connect basically in parallel with the device that we're measuring. So we'll hook that one up, clear it out. Um, I'm gonna double click on the meter and I want you to notice something. The default setting on the meter for voltage is DC. You see my mouse, volts, straight line, DC. We wanna measure volts AC, so I'm going to click on AC voltage. Please pay attention to the type of voltage and current that you measure. It makes a difference in the field. If you make a mistake here, you'll make a mistake in the field. Okay, so I'll close that. This meter we need to connect in series. It's very, very important if you're going to measure current in a circuit, you must connect it in series with the circuit. The current must flow through the meter. I'll show you a trick. Okay, I'm going to take my positive lead, connect it to that wire, my negative lead, connect it to that wire. Basically, I'm not measuring anything. It serves no function. What I have to do is I have to delete the little piece of wire in between. Okay, so now I have to set it up to measure current. Now, you can only measure 10 amps or less, typically, when you're measuring current like this. So if you work in instrumentation or you work in... Um, you know, automation where you're measuring power, su power supplies or for controls for PLCs and solenoids and other devices and sensors, you would use a meter in this configuration. If you're working a lot with AC, you're measuring heaters and, and uh, hot water tanks and motors, you're probably going to have a clamp meter, okay? Which a lot safer meter to work with, but keep that in mind, okay? If you, if you do have a multimeter and it has a current function where you can measure current, Make sure that you do not select that function with your leads in those 
current jacks because you, you could possibly short out the circuit and damage the meter and, and, and cause uh, an even worse scenario to happen. Okay, so notice I, I clicked on the meter and I have my, my controls up and it's set for volts DC. So that's the default setting. We want to measure amps, AC. All right, so keep that in mind, please. Okay, keep that in mind. So I'm going to open up both meters and I'm going to run it. And we should have, obviously, we're going to have 24 volts AC across the load, and we should have an amp of current flow according to Ohm's law. But again, this is just to get the meters working and understand how they work. And we have, if you round it up, 24 volts AC. All right, check your meter. Make sure it makes sense in your mind. And we have an amp of current. We have 999 milliamps a milliamp is one thousandth of one amp so we've got an amp current flow all right so we have the correct measurements i'm going to stop it what i'm going to do now is i'll just put a frequency counter in there there's a couple of different frequency counters that we use we just connect it to the ac circuit on the ungrounded conductor i'm going to click run and we're running 60 hertz okay now we'll be using these when we're measuring uh, frequency on, on rectifier circuits. They're very useful for that. So um, that's where we'll use that. Very straightforward. Again, there's another one that we can use for a little bit more advanced. Okay, I'm going to stop this. And we're going to place a watt meter on the DC circuit. So I'm going to, I'm going to move my circuit up, pan it up, zoom in. And we're going to get a watt meter. Now, a watt meter basically is, as you can see from here, a volt meter and an amp meter together. Okay, so we have to hook up the same way. Um, I wish the amp meter was on the left side, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to flip it over here and I'm going to do that trick that I showed you earlier. I'm going to connect the amp meter. Notice how they have it labeled I. I is intensity of current in a circuit, uh, which is measured in amps, okay? Again, I, had, I did that little trick. I click on that wire, delete it, okay? Got my, uh, my amp meter hooked up. Now I'll take the voltmeter down here, and my plus up here, and we're good to go. But we need to always check our meter settings. I'm going to double click on the meter. And we've got voltage plus minus, current plus minus, and we're good to go. Now um, it's going to it's going to tell it's going to show us straight power, but if we were measuring uh, in a AC circuit, we would be able to measure power factor. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run. It's going to take a second and we've got 24 watts 24 volts times one amp of current flow right so the reason i chose those simple values is so those numbers make sense sense to you you can uh, manipulate those values and practice your ohm's law or you know uh, measure it ex and, and, and expect in your head to see a number then turn your meter on and reflect that number okay so that's uh that's using some of the basic multimeter functions and we're going to move on to uh some some more advanced functions in the next video see you in the next one